Hey, what's up you guys? How are we? My name's Jacob and welcome back to another video. Welcome back to another reaction video. And to the uh, the second video of the day actually. The second video of the day. Last but not least. Will it be the last? I don't know. Am I talking shit? Absolutely. Guys, <laughs> you can tell. You can probably tell it's been a while. This channel, KTO, the channel I am choosing to react to today is pretty legendary in the world of American football and college football um, compilation videos on YouTube. So I thought, you know what? I'm getting back into this video series. I want to bring a bit of content back to the channel. And so I've gone straight to his channel. And um, on July 1st, 2021, it's almost got 100,000 views. There was a video published titled The Most Dangerous Man in NFL History. Now, if that doesn't pique your interest as a football fan, I don't know what will. So, guys, sit back, relax. Let me switch scenes here. And let's find out exactly who was the most dangerous man in NFL history. So, I'm going to be trying something out. A new style of series that I'm going to call the most unbelievable football stories. Or better yet, the muffs. Gotcha. Inside the 25, and touched by Jacoby Jones. Recovered inside the five-yard line by Baltimore. This will be sort of a random collection of stories, both on and off the field, that I have found in my time of making these historical football videos. If you want to see me continue this series, like this video and let me know in the comments down below. Okay. Now you got to like your own comment. But first, this video is sponsored by SeatGeek. I'm excited to be working with these guys again, because that means that events are back and the NFL season is near. And whether it's football games, basketball games, concerts, or other events, SeatGeek takes tickets from all across the web and puts them into one area, making buying simple. Every ticket is rated on a scale from 1 to 10, so you know you're getting a good deal. Plus, first time user. It is. Not, I'm not saying I've used it before, but it does look from the outside like an absolutely incredible app. Users can use my promo code KTO at checkout to save. But that's not my sponsor. That's KTO's. Save 20 bucks. Shout out to SeaGeek for the sponsor. Now, let's dive into these stories. In the most dangerous man in the NFL. Let me just, let me just think. There is one guy that comes to mind, but that was probably the, the, I don't know, the most angry, the angriest man in the NFL, Bill Romanowski. Look, he had a chip on his shoulder so big that he'd hate you before he even met you. But was he the most dangerous? 1974, the Green Bay Packers were looking to bolster their wide receiving core. Prior to the NFL draft, general manager Dan Devine thought he had found a diamond in the rough when he selected Portland State's Randy Woodfield. On top of being a pretty talented kid, his coach said that, quote, When he was with me, he was the nicest, most gentlemanly kid I ever knew. He was quiet and polite, hardworking, and real coachable. Okay, he's a wide receiver, 4'7". Look at this. Look at this. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. These, these player reports that they used to do back in the day, very, very concise, straight to the point. I think they're probably going a little bit too much these days. 4.7 and 40. Cuts on a dime. Hustles. Good hands. Fluid and smooth. Catches well in a crowd, a.k.a. Moss's people. And he's a good jumper. Well, I'd have to say as a wide receiver, 6 foot tall, 170. You could probably make something out of him, but he's not going to be the finished product. Well, after the team's first scrimmage versus the Chicago Bears, surprisingly, they decided to cut Woodfield from the team. Perhaps he wasn't as talented as they thought. Woodfield himself claimed that it was because the team had focused on the run game, but it turns out that the police in Wisconsin say it was due to Woodfield being involved in at least 10 cases of indecent exposure. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> state. It turned out. Oh wow, he's got a real problem. The Packers hadn't done much research on this guy. He had a multitude of concerning moments with the indecent exposure ten times. 
All right, that's a first. The law before he got to Green Bay. Well, first for me to hear about. And after his chance of being a pro football player ended, Three times in he college. was devastated. And things took a turn for the worst. Oh, no. Well, he brought it on himself. I mean, shit. Killers. He may turn out to be one of the most prolific serial killers um, that we have ever known. You're joking. As of today, detectives have definitively linked Randy Woodfield to seven murders, but they suspect the I-5 killer is responsible for as many as 24 more. For the next few years, he would go on a string of robberies and sexual assaults. Then six years after being drafted by the Packers, over the span of a few months, what? it's estimated that he killed up to 44 victims. His nickname is the I-5 Killer, and this man may be the most violent player in NFL history. And it The I-5 Killer. I'm assuming I-5 is a certain highway. It has nothing to do with his on-the-field actions. There's an article from Sports Illustrated that details more about this story if you're interested. The 428th pick. <laughs> I was actually looking at this before. I thought, how the fuck can you be in the round? How the fuck can you be drafted in round 17? But it's because there was over 400 picks. I'll leave a link down below. Currently, this man is serving a life sentence. Not the greatest pick in the world by Packers GM Dan Devine. Speaking of Devine, he would leave Green Bay following the 1974 season in pursuit to coach Notre Dame in 1975. This was a special year in Notre Dame's history, for one big reason. Rudy! 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 I will say, guys, that look, there is some... You know, I'm going to say interesting opinions on on Rudy and and what he was like as a as a as a man and you know as a young man back in the day and certain uh, intricacies about the movie that were possibly not quite 100 percent true. But at the end of the day, for me, not having any you know information, any inside information on who Rudy was, what he was really like, for me as a as a fan of American football, a fan of college football sitting here and watching that movie for the very first time i had tears down my face i had to make a post on instagram and i don't post about much that film was absolutely fantastic i loved it so now let's see what happened Rudy, 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 Rudy. actual rudy, rudy play i've never i don't know if i've seen this before I can't even remember what he played. Did he play running back? Rudy is a legendary figure in the lore of college football. And one of his teammates happened to be... Hang on. Did he play quarterback for a snap? Rudy, Rudy, Rudy. Rudy is a legendary figure in no. the lore of... No, he didn't. Where is he? Where is this guy? Rudy, Rudy, I think he played running back. He is a legendary... I'm looking for the smallest guy on the field. <laughs> ...in the lore of college football. And one of his teammates happened to be... Joe Montana. Hang on, 45. Where's 45? Can we see it? Can we see it? Rudy no, is a legendary figure in the lore of college I'm football. I'm assuming he got tackled, but I and can't remember. one of his teammates happened to be Joe Montana. Montana played college ball at Notre Dame from 1974 to 1979. And on January 1st, 1979, Montana suited up for his final college game ever, the Cotton Bowl. The Cotton Bowl takes place in Dallas, Texas, and it's one of college football's most decorated bowl games of all time. Entering this game, the biggest storyline was the weather. Right now, the game time temperature is 22 degrees, and there's an 18 mile per hour wind out of the north. Now that adds up to a chill factor of six degrees below zero. And that's what these two teams are gonna be playing in this afternoon. Snow flurry started to fall here within the last hour here at the Cotton Bowl. At the halfway mark, Notre Dame was trailing 20 to 12, but their biggest problem was the state of Montana's health. He had been battling the flu, and by halftime had reached hypothermia, where his body temperature had dipped under 96 degrees. Tim Kegel is the quarterback, it's not Montana. Where are we going with this story, guys? That's a surprise. As the teams began the second half, Montana- Is this a second story? Ah, okay, so the most dangerous man in NFL history, that, that portion of the story is actually over. 
We're going to see the craziest cotton bowl ever, a dumb fun fact, and when two teams combined into one. You know what? We're going to skip to a dumb fun fact, but we are going to title this video The Most Dangerous Man in NFL History, having killed 44 people, no less. Let's see a dumb Niners NFL legends. fact. Jerry Rice was one of Montana's favorite targets and is also one of only two players ever to catch a pass over the age of 40. Here's a little trivia. That's crazy. Catching a pass in the NFL over the age of 40, and Tom Brady's going to be one of them. <laughs> Go to the trickery. Edelman throws to Brady. <laughs> Tripped himself up, mate. Fuck me, dead. It is like a baby giraffe. Batted in the air. It looks like Favre came down with it. Funny you enough. are kidding me. So there's only one player. So there's only one player not having been a quarterback. That's called a pass while over 40 years of age, and that's Jerry Rice. And I tell you what, guys, that's the reason he is the number one greatest player of all time. I'm not saying it's my opinion. I'm saying it's NFL's opinion. Brett Favre's very first career pass looked very similar. First and, and what I will say is just one thing, and one thing only. I measure success by Super Bowls. And so does Jerry Rice. Nick Manette. Or Super Bowl rings, 3 nothing. So Randy had his say, entitled to his own opinion, no question. But then so too is our Jerry Rice. You know, I was really surprised that Randy Moss made that comment because how can you not bring stats in or how you impacted the game? I impacted the game by winning Super Bowls. So I'm sure Randy is still trying to win his first one, and I wish him the best. NFL completion, and it's to himself. That's when we knew this man was destined for greatness. So the 2020 season had some interesting protocol due to... Right, guys. That was the most dangerous man in NFL history. I, I wasn't aware of the fact that these, these videos had multiple news stories. Um, quite interesting. A nice concept by KTO. Not his most popular video series by any stretch of the imagination. But there is a video, believe it or not, three days ago comparing NFL rookies to their dads and I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that the reason why he's made this video is because there's a man by the name of Patrick Sertain II who's a defensive back and um, well he's an NFL rookie he's just got picked up by a team I'm not sure who they were but, they, but, but, but believe it or not his dad did play in the NFL as a 10 season veteran in the position of defensive back so guys you know what we're going to click that, and we're going to have a wee look in the next video. Thanks for watching. Thank you so much for being here. Your support is incredible. Like the video if you've liked it. Comment for the algorithm. Subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next video. Peace out.